grow your brand, to be able to get more exposure and be able to have uh, more eyeballs looking at your uh, brand. What's up, everyone? Jeff Kogel here. All right, so uh, this episode is called uh, The Biggest Hack in YouTube History. Uh, I do have a earphone on my ear, uh, so that way the audio quality should be dramatically better than uh, before. But let me talk about the biggest hack in YouTube history. And it was done by a security company they believe to be in Saudi Arabia called Our Mind. Okay, so, and I, I kind of discovered this. Um, I discovered this uh, when I went to one of my friends' uh, YouTube channel, and their description and their headline was uh, basically hashtag our mind, and then it has like a link to a YouTube video. And then in the description uh, says, uh, please contact us, okay? And I go to that YouTube uh, link. That YouTube link has been taken down already, so it's already gone. Okay, so YouTube uh, jumped on it, but it is considered the biggest hack because literally the biggest YouTubers have been hacked. So the ones that I know of personally is uh, the guys and gals at Just Kidding Films. Uh, uh, they're a huge comedian group uh, out in the Los Angeles area. Good friend Joe, uh, Bart, Gio, right? Um, literally all of their channels uh, uh, were hacked. And not only that, but a couple of other big celebrities. I'm not, I don't follow too much of the celebrity uh, YouTube world other than some of my friends, but they've been hacked as well. Uh, I believe David So has been hacked as well. And for me, I see this and I'm just like, damn, that is messed up because a lot of the stuff that was indexed, I'm sure Google will go out and fix it because it's not the first time they've been hacked. They've been hacked in, uh, I remember last year they got hacked in 2016. So they'll go back and uh, fix it. But as a opportunist, as a businessman, as someone uh, who looks for opportunities, right? I see this and if you're looking to break in and making a name for yourself, right? I mean, it may be the best time ever to actually start releasing more videos this coming week or so um, as this report is coming out, uh, especially trying to ride hot topics and hot trends, which is something like this called a YouTube hack, right? So this group, uh, Own Mind, uh, Our Mind, I'm sorry, Our Mind, hacked even like guys like Mark Zuckerberg's uh, Pinterest account. They hacked the CEO of uh, Google before. Uh, I believe they hacked uh, one of the owners of WikiLeaks before. And so they're hacking accounts and not exactly sure how they're hacking it other than the fact that they might be social engineering to actually hack it, which is a little bit different than just straight up like trying to guess what the password is, okay? Um, social engineering basically means that you're calling uh, other vendors that a individual might be using and you ask questions and you find someone that's literally weak on the other side to give you and disclose information to you to get access to an account okay so I don't know exactly how they hacked it other than the fact that it's not that difficult I'll tell you that and I know this for a fact because I got kind of interested in hacking in when 1995 Windows 95 came out um, I was a young chap and uh, my teenage years and I started to uh, tinker with a lot of computers and I even figured out a way to like change when it loads up I don't know if anyone remembers the window 95 when it loads up right that little window logo comes up and it's like and then it comes up and uh, I figured out how to change that logo so I was a dark kid at that time so I changed the logo to a skull I remember that and then later on I learned how to like uh, uh, open people's uh, CD-ROMs uh, as well as to be able to even read other people's emails if they're online by dropping a little Trojan horse uh, through AIM. So I, so I know a little bit, little bit about that, that kind of stuff and then the hacker world. But when I see that, right, it's just ask yourself how easy it is to actually break into someone's account. It, it really is. Uh, um, it's not that difficult, honestly. Um, why is because humans are very habitual individuals, so there's a lot of patterns that they use and there's things that they do that they don't change. So if you know anything about someone and you can actually uh, look a lot of the stuff up on uh, the internet right you can kind of easily even figure out people's passwords honestly and it's uh, it's a scary place to be in and the cybersecurity is a huge thing but I want to kind of uh, have you look at this in a totally different way 
all right? I want to have you look at this thing that's going to probably blow up and you're going to see a lot more of this trend uh, and people are going to be talking about this hack probably a lot more in the news in the next uh, 24, 40 hour, uh, hours, maybe a week or so because it is considered the biggest uh, hack in the YouTube uh, world. Now, if you listen to this uh, later on on the podcast, which is uh, about a couple of days delayed, um, let me know in the review section if this uh, it comes true or not. Um, or if you tell me, Jeff, you're absolutely wrong, which is okay too. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that uh, the news are going to pick it up and they're going to talk big about this. Okay. Now, here's here's some couple things on the update on the YouTube front um, on what YouTube is doing. Right. So, YouTube is rolling out with the with the well, they already have it, the partner program, right? Um, where you get paid as a content creator if you create videos. So if you go to YouTube and a YouTube video pops up, like let's just say you you know search something how to you know whatever it is, how to you know cook a cake, how and then a video pops up, you click on that video and then an advertisement pops up, right? So that advertisement uh, it can be a 15 seconds, 30 seconds, some of them are now I believe a minute long. Those are revenue streams that the uh, content creators actually get paid on and they get paid anywhere from depending on the topic and depending on who their audience is okay they're gonna get paid anywhere on the low end of a dollar uh, per CPM uh, to three dollars if it's like kind of teeny boppers or or young kids that are uh, on there watching like typically like a like, like a comedy or so, something funny uh, something like that it'll be a dollar to three dollars and anything where it's like business related financials and stuff like that right industry then it can go up from three dollars to five dollars and above okay and when I say CPM it means that per thousand views so if you look at someone's account and they'll be like oh okay they got a thousand views on it then depending on that little table that I gave you or what I just ranted about um, they can they just made a dollar they just made three dollars they might have made five dollars okay now if they have ten thousand views just you know move the ones and move the zeros down over they made what ten dollars they made what thirty uh, dollars they made fifty dollars, or maybe they made uh, eighty dollars. If it's eight dollars CPM, now if they have a hundred thousand views, right now it gets starts getting getting interesting because then you're making what a hundred dollars per video. They're making what. Um, $300, they're making $500, $800 per video, all right? So if you look at the most popular vloggers on YouTube and you start knowing these numbers and metrics, you can start figuring out what kind of income that they're making, all right? Now, I've tried to reverse engineer this because I'm going back into YouTube pretty damn strong. Currently right now, I'm using the Facebook Live platform at jeffkoga.live to create tons and tons of content and then I'm gonna be drip feeding it into uh, my YouTube channel, uh, which which launched yesterday, actually not yesterday, 48 hours ago, and uh, my assistant has been instructed to uh, upload uh, the videos uh, in there, and uh, we're gonna be dripping a lot of the videos out, and it's a brand new channel uh, that I created. Now, I have to create a brand new channel because a couple things, okay? Number one, um, I have I have currently right now um, three YouTube channels. One is called the J Jeff Koga, that was like my personal one that I've had like forever, uh, and then I created one, that's another one, was like Jeff Koga, um, but that was for my investment company that I had. And then the third one is called the Real Estate Strategy Lab. It's for uh, uh, my real estate education company. But my personal account is currently right now. Uh, I cannot get any uh, shared revenues for uh, getting paid by YouTube. And here's the reason why, okay? As I started making money on YouTube, right? When I, well, with my investment company, I started doing video, okay? Uh, it started, we started getting tons and tons of views, okay? I'm, I'm getting, and yeah, you know, with some of the other YouTubers out there, they get a lot more views than I did. But in the space of real estate, right? Um, what was accomplished with the team that I had and, and my video guy, it was pretty amazing. Um, because why? Is because the income started coming up where we're literally you know they started sending checks of you know started off of being only like ten dollars you know started off to being like 40 bucks right it became 50 it became 100 and the highest I think the check that I got from YouTube was almost like 600 bucks or something like that all right and um, we hovered around the range the channel of like like 300 to uh, 500 for uh, about a quarter or so until the check stopped it stopped because once I got my $600 check, I said, oh my gosh, you know, this is like having a rental portfolio. Let me go ahead and see if I can uh, hack the system. And that was probably the worst thing to do uh, where my brain went. So, so what I ended up doing was uh, <laughs> um, I ended up going to a site 
and this site is called Amazon Turk. And Amazon Turk is literally have, they have kinds of like little network of people that are willing to do things for you for literally pennies. Okay, meaning like they'll take a survey for you for a penny. Um, they'll do research for you for like a couple cents, okay? Now, these individuals are all around the world, okay? Predominantly, a lot of them are in uh, underdeveloped countries. So when you pay them a penny, it's a lot of money for them, all right? So, and I discovered this uh, at a mastermind group I was part of in, I think, 2008, 2009 or so. I don't remember exactly when. So I would use Amazon Turk for a lot of market research, even having them write blog posts. I would even have them write um, reviews. Um, I would have them do all kinds of stuff and one of the things that I thought I was creative about was to actually artificially drive views uh, to my videos. So I tried to hack it, okay? So I ended up saying, hey, uh, please go to this video and give me feedback on uh, what, can, uh, what, what this video can do better. Okay, and that's what I said, and I'll basically pay you a penny. And, and the idea that I had why I was going to do a penny was, as I just said, is what? Dollar per, a dollar per CPM, right? So it was a lot higher back then, okay? Now, now it has come down, but, uh, but, uh, but back then, a couple years ago, okay, it was ranging like even on a crummy, a crummy channel, okay? And I don't think my channel was crummy, but it was ranging anywhere from like $5 to uh, every, even like $6, okay? And especially I was in the financial kind of quote-unquote financial world world so uh, so it ranged that okay so I was just like okay if I can have someone uh, I pay someone a penny and they can go out and watch my video not only will my video uh, count go up but also at the same time uh, that will help me uh, create higher viewership and if I have higher viewership uh, that will actually create social proof and if I have social proof then uh, more people will actually watch the video so that was my train of thought okay so I went on Amazon Turk posted this uh, little job thing that I said hey I'll pay you a penny if you leave me a feedback on this video that I just launched and I did that and then I put a budget on there for a dollar all right and when I put that budget on there for a dollar guess what people started doing it and when I started doing it, my view count started going up like crazy I was like oh my gosh and now now some of these videos already had like a couple hundred views already and some of them already had a couple thousands and then some already had like a couple tens of thousands okay so it wasn't like I was starting from zero I was just I got hooked on the actual YouTube income um, because I was like I had rental portfolio uh, at that time I no longer have it because I sold that property those properties but I had it and literally those YouTube videos were making more money uh, than my rental portfolio um, it was a funny thing um, so I got so I was like man like I bet you I can I can uh, I can make more money here and not only that but I have friends in the YouTube community that are making like I'm talking about per video like you know thousands of dollars in a year they're you know in a month they're making tens of thousands you know so and in a year they make some of them are making over a couple million dollars so so I know that the money is there in the YouTube world so I've seen it I know friends that do it and I was like damn let's try it out so I did it put the job post up paid people view count and started going up I was like ooh success so my strategy was organically boom when it first uploads the video to YouTube first I would uh, wait until my subscribers get it it gets up to a couple hundred views then I would uh, post a uh, work um, kind of job description on Amazon Turk and I would have people watching and I'll have a budget of a dollar per video so that's what I did kept on doing right and when I kept on doing that view, view count started going up and um, and then this is where I got really ballsy I said, you know what, it worked for a dollar, you know what, let me throw in five dollars, right? So I started doing that to some of my uh, uh, some of my new videos and the view count started going up. I was like, man, this is pretty damn awesome, okay? And then keep in mind, I'm watching kind of like what you earn as a YouTuber, right? And I was like, oh my God, just growing fast. So so I'm watching this and I'm just like, oh, this is pretty cool. And uh, suddenly I get an email from uh, uh, YouTube, okay, Google in this case, right? Because Google you owns YouTube uh, saying, we have seen a, a suspicious activity on your account and uh, because because of that, we're suspending uh, suspending your uh, AdSense, and AdSense is the actual platform that uh, uh, Google has where where you actually get paid as an advertiser, as a content creator, right? And I was like, damn it! So they suspended my AdSense account, so no longer was I able to actually make income from the YouTube videos, and and by this time, I think I already had like like uh, 200, 300 videos on one channel, another one I think I had another 100 plus channel videos, so so keep in mind I have like what, easily over 300 videos, okay? So, um, and I spent a couple thousand dollars in uh, uh, creating it, and so it stopped. So 
I attempted to create more videos, but then afterwards it was just like, ah, you know, because what ended up happening was some of the funds that I was getting from that, I was rolling it back into making sure that the video guy can get paid, and that's how I was doing it. I was parlaying it that way, okay? Uh, so that's why I have to start up a new YouTube channel. So I started up a new YouTube channel, and I started up a new AdSense account uh, under a different corporation. No longer I have the other corporation anymore, so I started under a new corporation, and I'm banking on YouTube as well, even though this is being streamed live on uh, Facebook. I am still a big believer on YouTube because Facebook is still a new platform. I, I still believe in it, but I'm using it to create content and to actually test a lot of stuff out. And then once I have that, I'm going to bulk upload as well as pre-schedule a lot of the views. And depending on how it goes, I may go back and forth like every other day from YouTube to Facebook on the live stream in the office. Um, because I believe that YouTube can get more organic views. Um, the sheer fact that it's uh, if you do something strange, right? The internet loves strange, okay? You guys know this. Internet absolutely loves weird stuff, all right? So so I'm going to tap into that as well. And uh, and as I'm doing this, um, you got to play offense, right? So for example, going back to the biggest hack of uh, YouTube history ever, where literally one, the biggest YouTubers got hacked, and currently right now probably they're trying to figure out exactly what to do. I haven't reached out to my friends and be like, hey, what's up, man? Did you get hacked? Hey, you know, no, you know, leave them alone. They're probably trying to figure out a lot of stuff on their end. But what's the scariest part is the fact that a lot of YouTubers, right? Because the YouTube com community is really interesting. It's a really interesting dynamic in the fact that they're really, really creative and uh, they're so detailed. Meaning like they're really anal about the creativity and the content that, uh, that they produce. Why? Is because that's how they make money, right? But when it comes to kind of like the marketing side, right? The business people always have an edge because they're always constantly looking for ways to promote. They're always constantly looking for ways to uh, capture email address and a lot of the online marketers, they're really great at using email as, as a marketing platform. So when I have conversations with some YouTubers and I say that, and I say, I tell them, I said, dude, like you need to start building the email list, bro. And they'll be like, oh yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But the uh, majority of them don't. There are some, some friends I've told some friends that actually has finally got that and they started doing that. And I'm just like, oh, finally, you know? Um, and so they're building up their email list, but they're not utilizing it on the best means possible. Like for example, like if this hack happened, right? And let's just say you have a million subscribers on it easily you should at least get 10% of those people on your email list right so meaning you should have a hundred thousand people that when you send the hit the send button you send an email broadcast to hundred thousand people easily 10% you should get that if you have a million subscribers okay and uh, so some of the guys don't even have that but you know if you have this kind of like this hack right how cool would it be to write up an email that says hey we just got hacked uh, can you do us a huge favor to please check our other channels to see uh, if you see any of that uh, going on and then send a link out. Boom. Now you're creating relationship and bond uh, with your community even more. And not only that, but you're getting more engagement, telling them to leave comments, right? They're going to they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you got this one hacked. You got that one hacked. Oh my goodness, right? And you create all this kind of buzz where you can trend ride a lot of stuff, right? So so I saw that as an opportunity if you have an email list or you have social media followings that you actually use that to create more buzz and, and create more momentum for yourself, right? Especially if you're a big name, that's what I would absolutely do right now if you are a big name in the YouTube community, I would go out and I would use this opportunity to actually talk to your guys' uh, networks, right? And be like, hey, what the heck, man? You know, what's up? What's going on with the security thing? You know, security breach, okay? Um, I haven't checked what other networks that got uh, hacked. I have another friend that's a part of uh, Wicked uh, uh, Wicked Sport, I believe that's what's called, um, which is one of the biggest uh, YouTube networks uh, for sports industries, right? For people in the sports uh, YouTube channels. Um, so I haven't checked. Um, hopefully, he didn't get hacked as well. But I would use it as an opportunity, especially if you're a vlogger, then I would definitely use trends and use hot topics to get your message out, get more attention from, from the community, right? So for example, I did a campaign, I did an email campaign this week where my email had the subject line was uh, tragic, right? United, and I had no, actually said United and I had an airplane emoji and it says tragic. Okay, and that was my subject line. Uh, why is because there's a lot of talks uh, about United Airlines dragging that uh, doctor out, right? Dragging that gentleman out uh, out of the airplane, and uh, it's it's huge right now. It's a big topic right now that's going on. So I used that, and I kind of you know wrote up my feelings on what I truly genuinely feel uh, about the situation, and then I pivot pivoted over to what I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing, right? So um, it's one of those things that you got to do. It's one of those things that I highly recommend people to do because that's how you get noticed in the marketplace. So if you're trying to break in. 
I think in the uh, in the YouTube space, um, that's something that a hot topic. You should definitely jump on and do it. So probably this weekend, I am going to look at that a little bit. And depending on, probably spend about maybe um, 30 minutes for research. And depending on that 30 minute research, um, 80% of my gut says just go and do it. So I am going to most likely do it. Um, but I'm going to do a research and then I'm going to see if I can create some videos on this particular topic and give kind of a businessman and an entrepreneur a, a view on what's going on. And hopefully that will be able to use the algorithm in YouTube to be able to get more views and capture a lot of viewership that way uh, to my new channel that I created. So again, I'm going to be looking at a lot of these uh, hacks and using these hacks and everything that I've learned in the, in the years of online marketing, in the years of being in business in the years of you know running investment companies and stuff like that and really try to hack uh, hack what's going on because I am going to be launching a couple other shows as well so I'm going to wrap it up because I need to get into the office here uh, back to the point of seek, uh, capitalizing on opportunities and looking at trends that are going on hot news topics that are going on and find opportunities on how you can use that to grow your brand to be able to get more exposure and be able to have uh, more eyeballs looking at your uh, brand. My recommendation uh, is to go do that and uh, if you want to do something where let's just say you're in the health and you're uh, a you know that you know a big uh, ch YouTube channel that was in the health industry got hacked right um, by the hacking company, then I would highly recommend I highly recommend to start creating more videos now because I bet you anything in the sheer fact that is no longer indexed uh, or temporarily is paused, your video is probably going to get discovered more uh, than uh, than the actual uh, the big YouTube channel. So that's my recommendation to you is to highly highly do that um, and uh, go out there keep taking action we got the trash man right there um, doing that so you might hear all this stuff um, but this is Jeff Koga I'm signing out and if you're hearing this on the podcast make sure you go to jeffkoga.live and watch me grind it out every single day and watch me as I step in the office kind of like a security camera behind me as I go from a solopreneur to building an actual company uh, Jeff Koga I'm signing out take care and bye-bye